All right, all right. Welcome back to Algebra, Chapter 3, Section 4, Graphing Linear Equations in Standard Form. We're having a good time here talking about standard form. Standard form is the form ax plus by, there we go, beautiful y, by equals c, where a, b, and c are constants. So real numbers. Okay, so for example, I could have 2x plus 3y is equal to 12. How about that? Okay, now if x, for example, was 0, if I plug 0 in for x, plus 3y equals 12, then I would get 3y equals 12. I could divide by 3 on each side, and I'd get y is equal to 4. Okay. If y is 0, on the other hand, I could solve and get x. So I could get 2x plus 3 times 0 is equal to 12. So 2x is equal to 12. Divide by 2 x is equal to 6. So if I make the other one 0, I can write it as x is 6 or y equals 4. When the other coordinate is 0, then I'm left and I can solve for that one coordinate. Okay, now what do those look like? If I have y equals a number, let's say this was 2 right there. 2, so if I have y equals 2, then that's a horizontal line. Is a horizontal line. Okay, because no matter what x is, if x is 1 or if x is 2, y is always 2. And then on the other hand, if I have x equals a number, for example, x equals 1. Okay, there's 1, there's 2. No matter what y is, 1, 2, x is always 1. When y is 1, x is 1. When y is 2, x is 2, because x equals 2. That is a vertical line. All right, notice that that point where it crosses the x-axis has a y-coordinate of 0. So really, we just need the x-coordinate for that point. Here, the y-coordinate is b, and the x-coordinate is 0, because x is 0 right there. So let's look at graphing these, graphing a horizontal and a vertical line. Okay, graph y equals 4. Okay, so y equals 4. Here's the y-axis. I go up to 4. y is always 4. So over here, y is 4. Over there, y is 4. So y equals 4 is a horizontal line. x equals negative 2. So on the x-axis, we go to negative 2. Okay, and x is always negative 2. Now note that this is not a function. Right? x equals negative 2 is not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Right? But y equals 4, that is a function. All right, using intercepts to graph equations. So where it crosses the y-axis, that's the y-intercept. This point right here, where x is 0, and then the y-value is b. So the y-intercept is b. Remember, we learned this y-intercept is a b. Yo, check this. Where the graph crosses the y-axis to determine y, just make x zero. That's one step to be a function hero. So, if x is zero, if we make x zero, we get the y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis. On the flip side, right, the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. 
We can make y zero to get the x-intercept. All right, so we want to use those intercepts to graph a linear equation. All right, so I want to find the intercepts of this. So to find the y-intercept, to determine y, just make x zero. That's one step to be in a function here. So we'll make x zero. And then we can find the y-intercept. So that's 4y is equal to 12 divided by 4. And we get y is equal to 3. Okay, so the y-intercept, y-value when x is 0 is 3. So b equals 3. And then the x-intercept, we make y 0. If I make this 0, I'm going to get 3x is equal to 12. Divide by 3 on each side, x is equal to 4. So I go out on the x-axis to 4. There's my point. I only need two points to graph a straight line. Lines are always straight, so two points to graph any line. And there we go. So I've graphed that using the x and y intercepts. All right. You're planning an awards banquet for your school. You need to rent tables to seat 180 people. Important information, you need to seat 180 people. Tables come in two sizes. Small tables seat 6 people. Large tables seat 10 people. The equation 6x plus 10y equals 180 models this situation where x is the number of small tables, x is small tables, y is the large tables. Graph the equation, interpret the y, the intercepts. Okay, so let's start by finding the intercepts. That means make the other one zero. So if I make the other one zero, it's going to drop away. Right? If I make this zero, then I get 10y equals 180. Divide by 10, y equals 18. If I drop off the 10y by making that zero, I get 6x is equal to 180. Divide by 6 on each side, and x is equal to 30. So the y-intercept is 18, so x is 0, y is 18. We're going by 2's here, so 16, 18, that's right here. And then the x-intercept is 30, so 28, 30 right there. Now I'll use those to make a graph. This has to be as exact as possible if we're going to use the graph to make our estimations. Okay, and there we go. Right about there. Okay, now looking at this graph, find four possible solutions in the context of the problem. All right, a solution is an ordered pair that makes it true. Now I graphed a continuous graph, but uh, really this should be a discrete graph because doesn't make sense to have a half or three quarters of a table. All right, so we have to look at seeing where are they uh, exact coordinates, like right here or right here. Okay, whoop, come on. There we go. So we have four solutions here. What do the intercepts mean? Interpret the intercepts. Y equals 18 means that y is the number of large tables, so we could use zero, no small tables, tables, and 18 large tables. x equals 30, that means no large tables, oh. tables, and 30 small tables. Okay, this right here, this point is 10 and 12. That's 12 small and 10 large tables. This point here is 20 and 10. That would be, no, sorry, this is 6. 6 small tables, 
and 20 large tables. That's what these different points mean. All right, and there you have it, graphing linear equations in standard form. Remember, y-intercept is the b yo check this where the graph crosses the y-axis. To determine y, just make x zero. That's one step to being a function hero. And you are on your way. Remember to like and subscribe. Good times.